In this video, we'll discuss how you can create uh, cascading lists uh, uh, on the UX component. So you can see here that we have a UX component with two lists um, that are populated from the uh, customer table in uh, Northwind. And uh, the first list is showing a list of all the countries. And when I click on a uh, particular entry in the uh, list, the second list, which shows um, a list of all the cities, is filtered uh, based on the value of the selection over here. So uh, this list over here has a parent list and we've created uh, in effect what, what we call a cascading series of lists here. And there's no limit to the, uh, the depth of the cascade that you can create. So let's go there and click on different entries and we can see that the list uh, cascades automatically. Now of course um, uh, like any other control, this could be put into a repeating section. So if I were to go to my uh, back to the builder and then turn this repeating section on and uh, go back now to uh, the run mode, you can see here's my uh, repeating section and there are five uh, rows in the repeating section. And each row in the repeating section of course is independent of another. And if I were to go to the uh, bottom and then press add new row, you can see um, the new row gets added and it has uh, the um, cascading list on it. But let's um, keep it simple now, go back to uh, no repeating section and then take a look now at how these two lists um, are defined. So let's go back now to the builder and then uh, go back to the first list uh, which is a list of countries. So you can see that this is based on a uh, SQL um, data source and that our um, uh, connection string is going to uh, Northwind and our SQL statement is getting a distinct list of um, uh, countries from the customer table and it's ordered by country and of course uh, we haven't specified any filter for this list. Now let's um, and also um, what's important uh, over here is that we've also defined an argument and we've defined this argument as uh, what country and then we've set the value of this argument to um, curly bracket list countries which is the list control that we're currently uh, defining um, and uh, we've also specified here that this list should return a field value and the field value that it should return is country which of course is the only field in the list. So what this means is that every time um, I make a selection in the list this argument what country is going to get populated with the current value. So at runtime now when I go here and I click for example on Canada that argument got populated uh, automatically for me and that's going to be very important when we look at the definition of this second list over here. So now let's go to the second list over here and um, if we look at, uh, we can see that this is also based on a SQL data source. It's uh, coming from the uh, customer table and our SQL statement this time is uh, select distinct city from the customers table. Again ordered by city but now we've got a filter that says where country equals and the argument now is what country which is the argument that was uh, being set by this list's uh, parent list. We've also specified here that this list has a parent list and that the parent list is list countries. So um, by specifying the filter, uh, by specifying the arguments and by specifying the has parent list we've automatically turned this list um, over here from being a standalone list into being a dependent list. Uh, whose choices are based on the current selection in this row over here. So let's uh, pause this now and now go ahead and actually add a third uh, cascading list uh, to the uh, uh, component. So we're continuing our video on cascading lists in the UX component and we're going to go now and add a third list here that shows all of the companies uh, in the selected city over there. So let's go back now to our lists and then go uh, to um, data controls and then choose a list which I'm going to call list company and there we go. Uh, now before 
uh, we do this, what we want to do is make sure that the cities list is going to also populate an argument. So let's go back to the cities list here and go now and add a new argument called um, what city uh, whose value will be set at uh, runtime and then we'll set the value of that argument to the value returned by this list, by the cities list and then we'll also make sure that we go to the uh, return type and set the return value to city. So now we've basically got an argument called what city that's going to be correctly populated. Now let's go back to the uh, company list and again um, we're going to choose a SQL query so uh, we'll choose our connection string and we're going to go here against the Postgres uh, Northwinds uh, database over there and now we're going to go and um, define our um, uh, query against the customer table and we want the uh, company name field uh, but now let's um, let's switch over to um, um, actually let's go back there and choose uh, company name okay and now let's switch over to SQL so we can uh, put in a distinct clause and then a filter clause where we say where the um, country is equal to and then choose the argument called what country and then we need to add another filter uh, and what we want over here is where the city is equal to and we'll choose our argument here and we'll choose what city so now we've basically defined the filter for this um, third list and you can see that the filter uh, for this list is based on values from both of its parents the uh, uh, topmost parent which is country and then its immediate parent which is uh, city so we can go ahead there now and now go over to our list properties and uh, choose that column uh, let's go here and turn off show column titles over there uh, let's also set the list width to be um, two inches uh, click OK over there now and also let's turn off the label so we don't uh, need a label either so now let's go and uh, run it. Oh, let's do one final thing here. Uh, go back to list properties and say allow null selection uh, blank. So that means that when the list is rendered, it's gonna um, the first row on the list is going to be automatically selected. So now we go back to working preview now. And um, actually just before we go to working preview, we need to make sure that we uh, I forgot to specify that uh, that this list has a parent list and obviously its parent is the uh, cities list over there so let's save that there and now go back to uh, working preview and we can see that our list is there but let's move it up to the same line so we'll turn off um, the break over there save it again go back to uh, working preview now so let's go say to Canada now and then uh, as we change now you can see that the lists are cascading uh, all the way so when I change the uh, city the, the country here we get the list of cities in the United States click on the uh, city and then we get the companies in that city so now we've created three levels of uh, cascade but of course we could continue doing this um, uh, ad infinitum so the ability to create um, uh, data bound um, cascading list is really powerful and very easy to do uh, using the new list control in the UX component. Thanks very much for watching.